This war is part of the assault to end the Palestinian people as a nation and to destroy the question of Palestine. If you do not share this objective, you must stand against the war. The person leading this assault would sacrifice the Palestinian people and the Israeli people for his political selfish survival and is a sworn enemy of the two-state solution. I'm joined now by our guest, Jennifer, Jennifer Cassidy, who is in Dublin, who's going to help us unpack all of this. She is a former UN and EU diplomat and now a departmental lecturer in diplomatic studies at the University of Oxford. Jennifer, I just wonder, first of all, can I get your reaction and your take on those powerful and impassioned speeches really presenting ultimatums to the Security Council there by both the UN Secretary General and the Palestinian envoy. Yes, well, just to give my complete raw reaction, you know, when I was waiting uh, uh, to, to come on and just listening, um, I couldn't, uh, in all honesty, I couldn't help but just have tears in my eyes as the Palestinian ambassador who I've, um, you know, spoken with and worked with at the UN, um, make, uh, I could hear the emotion in this voice, make this plea. And this plea is, you know, not just to the international community at large, as he rightly noted, there are billions and billions of people in the world standing up and using their voice uh, for Palestine. But his plea was for, um, and having been in the Security Council myself, his plea was directed towards the United States, really, not to veto this resolution. Um, and his plea was also uh, to the Israeli state. But if you looked at the Israeli ambassador, um, and this is my own personal opinion, you know, he didn't even have the decency to look up um, and respond and, and even meet eye contact with the um, Palestinian ambassador. He just kept his eyes down and, and was writing notes. Uh, it was, I think, uh, uh, both speeches, but particularly the Palestinian ambassador. It's a speech, I think, that will go down um, in, in, in history. And, and just to note uh, one specific thing, you know, as an international law scholar myself and someone who worked on the Khmer Rouge tri tribunals in Cambodia, and I have been face to face with people who have been convicted and charged uh, with crimes against humanity and genocide. And I think one of the most poignant things that came out of this interview, that, um, excuse me, that speech that we should note is that, and I had just written it down to, to get the words exactly correct, he said, um, you know, uh, we cannot rewrite international law for Israel um, and international law can not be selective. You know, the laws of proportionality, the laws of distinction, uh, the laws of prevention, uh, these cannot be selectively applied to a country. These are all signed by, by democracies, which the world has deemed Israel to be. And, um, you know, I'm still, I just think it was such a powerful speech and, and to, to also echo uh, the previous the previous guest, uh, he brought up the almost the, the perfect words as well when he said, you know, uh, Palestinians will not die, uh, will not be silenced um, and um, they, their death will not be in vain. But even to speak of, you know, impending deaths of even more Palestinians, I could hear the emotion in the Pal uh, Palestinian ambassador's voice and uh, you know, I think around the world, if people are not moved by this, um, you know, uh, it, it astounds me uh, where we go from here. And Jennifer, I, I wonder what your take would be. You know, there's this clear message that this is a pivotal moment in history and that people around the world will remember how states behave at this point mm -hmm. in time. How much exactly. does that weigh on those in power and on those, you know, deciding which way they vote on the Security Council? How much are they taking that and bearing that in mind? Um, uh, it's, an, it's, it's an excellent question. And, and as you rightly said, and the um, Palestinian ambassador said, you know, History remember will remember where everyone stood on this, or whether they were, um, you know, decided to be silent. But as we saw in the last time this was table at the Security Council, on November fifteenth, um, all states voted for um, one or two abstained, but all states were in 
primary agreement for a permanent ceasefire. Um, so, you know, it really come back, it comes back to this realpolitik of that the most powerful states in the world, no matter how, um, you know, globalized we become, no matter how much knowledge we have on our phones, no matter how much citizens are informed, actually the uh, the biggest, uh, the, the people with the most power are still those with the most economic might and military clout. Um, so I don't think, um, and it hurts, it pains me to even uh, believe that states uh, such as the US um, and Israel don't care about the opinions of the international community. But what else can we gather fr from the actions that we've seen over the last 60 days, other than they don't care um, about any Jennifer, reprimand? Yeah. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us no, today and no, for your insight you for on this. Really, really valuable. I'm afraid we've run out of time.